Do you have pezanserini bursitis or tendonitis? It's hard to find good stuff in the, on the internet about it. This is the place where I want you to learn. We're going over theory as well as understanding of rehab today in this session. Okay, now on to the rehab section, rehab theory. I've given all the quick, quick tips I'm going to give on Pez Anthony. So again, just like all the other videos, it's gonna sound very brash and very direct at this point, but if you don't care about what your, what your knee condition actually is, how it's resolved, how it starts, how to stop it from coming back, then you're gonna to wanna to tune out right now because this rest of this part is not gonna interest you and it's gonna bore the heck out of you. But if you do care, then this is the spot where it's actually gonna get, get the most bang for your buck on this video. So keep in mind that Pez Anserini bursitis or tendonitis is really, really commonly misdiagnosed, okay? That is an important concept when we're talking about rehab because we have to rehab based upon the injury that you have or that you don't have. So a one that is commonly misdiagnosed as, or actually it's misdiagnosed as Pez Anserini bursitis, a lot of times it's actually a medial meniscus injury or there's some type of internal knee or an unstable knee that we're basically working with. And if you saw my video on cyst of the knee, I took this balloon, okay? The balloon basically, if you crush the balloon, this blown up, it'll escape from the top and the bottom. Or if I spread my, spread my fingers enough, it'll escape from between my fingers, okay? Basically, this describes the capsule of the knee. And with knee conditions, which you're gonna see in a whiteboard demonstration right here, with Pez Anserini bursitis, we have the gutter sign which comes out. So stuff starts to kind of ooze out of the inside of the knee and it almost drops into the area where the Pez Anserini is or so close to it that it seems like it's tenderness of the Pez Anserini. And this is the danger that we run. Let's go on to the whiteboard. Okay, we're in the good stuff now about the Pez Anserini uh, bursitis or tendonitis, and just to give you some reference points, I drew this stuff out. Um, so this is going to be what we call medial, which is like the inner, like uh, I guess I'll draw part of the body right here. Let's just say this is the body. Here's the outer part of you with the lateral aspect, and here is the bone, which is the femur, here's the tibia, here's the uh, fibula, which in this whole thing encompassing is the knee. So the reason why I want to draw this out again is because I want to show you the general proximity and the, the high possibility of misdiagnosis of these things. So now, I explained this is the femur, this is the bone, this is the joint space right here. And what I drew right here is actually, here's the medial meniscus, here's the lateral meniscus, here's the ACL and PCL, and inside this area is basically there's a balloon, okay? This whole thing is considered the joint capsule, and when your knee actually inflates from the inside, this joint capsule starts to, it finds areas to go out of, okay? And some of the places are actually bakers, uh, in the backside is baker's cyst, some of it goes on the side where it kind of spills over. We call it a gutter sign, where basically it kind of comes out of this area and it starts dropping down this way. Okay, I'll fill that in right there. Let's just say it's that black right there. I'll take these away. So basically what happens is when there's a gutter like this and it starts to kind of ooze out and down and comes down the capsule, the Paz Anserini is like right here, okay? And now we do have three muscles attaching to it, okay? And there's the bursa right there as well, but look how close this gutter happens, okay? And I guess ignore the, the muscles at this point now. So there's the gutter right there, and actually there's the MCL over it too. I guess we're gonna have lots of different lines of different colors. So there's the medial meniscus, there's the capsule, which fills the fluid and goes down, and there's the uh, medial, uh, medial collateral ligament right here, the MCL. And then we have the pes, bursa, and tendon right here. What happens is, when you start feeling in this area, it's like, hey, is this painful? And they're like, oh yeah, 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 it's really painful right there. And they're like, boom, Pez Anserini bursitis. But realistically, I can't tell you how many times we go like this. So this is a ultrasound probe, okay? It shoots sound waves in there, and it mainly it bounces them back again, kind of like sonar for like a uh, dolphin. And you can see that this stuff has oozed so close to the insertion of the Pez Anserini that people think 
that is Pezzanth serrani bursitis. But I would say easily over half the time, it's not. What happens is, again, is this thing fills up with fluid. Now it can be coming from just a macerated meniscus, an irritated meniscus right here, which could be, um, it could be torn, could be frayed, it could just be pinched. I mean, there could be a lot of things going on. Or it could be coming from the inside part of the balloon. And the balloon just, again, escapes anywhere it wants to. So it could be coming from uh, uh, chondromalacia patella, so the kneecap is right here, but it's floating on top. So it's just rubbing in there, and then it starts to ooze its contents all over the side. Then you think it's Pezzanth serrani bursitis. So here's the thing with it, is going through the exam that I showed you earlier, we're basically ruling in this versus ruling out this stuff because it's so close in proximity. And it's not to say the rehab will com be completely different, but it'll stop you from addressing the muscles which become the Pezzanth serrani, okay? I totally believe in that if you only have 10 minutes in the day, I'd rather you do it productively for what you're supposed to do it on versus addressing the muscles which feed into the Pezzanth serrani, which then you might be watching this YouTube video now thinking, well, I don't know why I'm not getting any better, any better because it's probably because you're not addressing the right thing, okay? If we work on it as a meniscus injury, um, you need to look at the past video I did on medial meniscus tears and runners. You'll get a better idea of how we typically rehab that. And if you're looking for a comprehensive video uh, on mechanics of how knee injuries happen with running, it's going to be the runner's knee video. Okay. I want you to go to that and I want you to fast forward all the way through, go to the very end where you start seeing a whiteboard like this or I stop giving quick tips, okay? Then we go into basic, the, basically the mechanics of how knee injuries happen in runners because of neuromuscular degrade or because of quote unquote form degrade as they get tired. So what you're, what you're gonna wanna see if you, if you wanna confirm this or not, here's the two things that will confirm it for you. If you really feel that it's Pez Ansarini, an MRI will find it. An MSK ultrasound will find it. And here's the pros and cons of both. Both an MRI, if you're not scared of going into a tube and sitting there still for 30 to 45 minutes, pretty completely fine. And if and if you don't, if, if you get clearance from your doc to do it or your insurance, by all means, I have no problem with this. An MSK ultrasound is probably, I, I'd say, roughly about a fourth of the cost, and it's just as accurate in seeing this because it's so close to the skin surface. Like I said, we're just bouncing sound off of it. You don't have to get derobed. You don't have to change at all. You don't have to go into a tube. And realistically, you could see it in five minutes if you knew what you were looking for. An MRI is still going to run you about you know, 30 to 45 minutes of your time after you get in and out of the machine. Okay, So MSK Ultrasound, I'll put a link below where you can find something like that. And there's a whole article I wrote upon it too. Now, if you like this so far, you please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. The only way you're going to get the videos in the future directly and actually right when they come out, so they're all up to date, is going to be to subscribe. So go into the corner. It's going to be, I think, in the lower left corner. I always forget, but it's a really, really tiny logo. Go in there and subscribe. Okay, it's the only way you're going to get the stuff. And if you want some good free content that I actually email out to any of my email subscribers, you're going to have to go to my website. That's p2sportscare.com. Go on there, and I'm going, to put a, I'm going to put a link below to where you can get all the good current stuff that I put out on knee conditions with running. So I have a specific email list that I only do with runners with runner or runners with knee pain. So if you want specific content to that, go through that link and you'll be asked to put in your email. I won't spam you. If you have more questions on knee conditions that you want me to go through, like you saw that someone put a question about a knee cyst, I did a whole video upon that. So if you have questions that you want me to answer, I can do it through video format. Just let me know. Let me know specifically what you want to hear and I'll do my best to answer it. If I can't answer it on video because this takes a, it takes a little bit of editing work for me to do, I usually do, it on, usually do it on podcasts. So if you haven't heard my podcast yet, go to iTunes, look up Performance Play Sports Care Podcast, and it's right there. So subscribe, review, share. That's all I'm asking for, and I'll give you the best free content I possibly can. Talk to you guys soon.